I want to play for our audience. Newt Gingrich managed to bring Nazis into his comments about the, the so-called mosque. Let me oh, play yeah. this and then get your reaction. Yeah. Folks who want to build this mosque who are really radical Islamists who want uh, to triumphantly prove mm -hmm. that they can build a mosque right next to a place where 3,000 Americans were killed by radical Islamists. Uh, those folks don't have any interest in reaching out to the community. They're trying to make a case about supremacy. That's why they won't go anywhere else. That's why they won't accept any other offer. And I think we ought to be honest about the fact that we have a right. And this happens all the time in America. Uh, you know, Nazis don't have the right to put up a... Uh, sign next to the Holocaust Museum in, in Washington. We would never accept the Japanese mm. putting up a site next to Pearl Harbor. Right. Uh, there's no reason for us to accept a mosque next to the World Trade Center. Bogus yeah. comparison? You tell me. Well, the Nazi word is the Nazi word is the calling card for low information voters. People <laughs> who don't understand the issues, it's easy to go to that visceral attack and Newt Gingrich is a master of it. Uh, you know, this is a guy. This is a guy who has a whole history of political failure, marriage failure. He comes, he, but he, but he always comes out. It, whether he's talking about his marriage that failed, whether he's talking about his political uh, history that's failed, he always comes out with the one-liner that is meant to attract the the unthinking listener. And he's a master of that. He really is. He's very good at it. And, you know, when you use the Nazi word, even though uh, you, you see Glenn Beck use it, you see Bill O'Reilly use it, you see, uh, you know, you see all the demagogues use it these days, the Palins, they use that because they understand, uh, let me cut through all reason. Let, there's no reason to think about what I'm telling you. You're going to hear the word Nazi. I'm going to associate it with this event or this person, and you can make your conclusions from there. It's so, also insulting, is it not? Because you were saying that a Nazi is the same as as a Muslim. Yes, exactly. But to them, you know, the the the, the uh, political narrative among the what I call the teabagger group, and he is, you know, he's a teabagger in a three-piece suit. I mean, we, we, we misunderstand what's happening with the teabagger movement in America. Teabaggers dress up differently. They're owned and operated by pol politicos like, like Newt Gingrich. They're owned and operated by corporate America. But they all have the same narrative. If you listen carefully, it's always the same narrative. Uh, you've got uh, Glenn Beck delivers the same narrative that Bill O'Reilly does, that Hannity does, that Michael Savage does, that Newt Gingrich does. So there, it's no mistake. You're, you're going to hear the Nazi word again and again anytime you're, anytime you're dealing with an issue that takes real analysis to where you have to say to some of those bumpkins that are out there, look, stop and understand. Take a minute and read, read an article. Take a minute and look <laughs> on the Internet and, and find out for yourself what the real facts are. But a guy like Newt is always going to use those kinds of words. He's done it his entire career. I've watched it time and time again with Newt. Again, whether, he's, whether it's his failed marriage, whether it's his failed politics, he always goes to those visceral kinds of attacks because he understands that people that listen to him really don't want to think. They're woefully ignorant. They're people who, who are, are ideologues in the truest sense, and they're going to react to words like Nazis. That's why he uses it. Speaking of ideologues, last week we had a great debate on the show uh, on Prop 8, and we had Tony Perkins is number two guy from the Family Research Council saying, you know what, the judge that decided that case, it, he could be biased because it's possible he was gay. Is there any legal substantiation to that? I mean, Not should we all. have atheists rule on religious matters so because otherwise, you know, they could be biased too? <laughs> Not at all. Look again. The 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 there's some great material out right now. I mean, and yeah. I know you've probably seen it, David. It's called the Dumbing Down of America. Yep. Uh, this it's turning out. It's coming out every day where you're seeing real empirical data about what is happening to the American public. Why is it a guy can make a statement like that about the judge about that particular judge and the public say? Gee whiz, it makes perfect sense. Well, this is a startling number, but the last time they looked at it, the American public is reading and comprehending on something between a 6th and a 7th grade level. <laughs> so w when they hear that statement... Could that possibly be true? It is true. That's amazing. But, no, it is true. And the reason he can say that, David, is because the next thing that happens is he knows nobody's really going to understand it, nobody's going to look into it. <laughs> I'm the guy making the statement, you know, I'm part of this organization that has this this veneer of credibility, and they're going to believe me. And unfortunately, until you started in America, until you had started having organizations like Media Matters and Mother Jones and the Progressive or and radio shows just like yours that ask tough questions and really look for answers, it was easy to do that. It's a demagoguery that still exists in America, and it's worse today 
It is worse today because the average American reads and comprehends on something between a sixth and a seventh grade level. It's it's incredible. Hey, last question for Mike Papantonio. I just read that it looks like we found about close to two billion barrels of oil in Afghanistan. We're not leaving anytime soon, are we? No, we were. We all knew what we knew why we were there from the very beginning. There was any question why we were there. Everybody knew it. They had to downplay it, but we've always been there for oil. It's 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 not about democracy. It's not about weapons of mass destruction. It wasn't because we were worried about Saddam Hussein, it was because we needed oil. And that's why we're there. That's why we're going to be there for the next friggin' century. We've been speaking with Mike Papantonio, attorney, host of Ring of Fire Radio. Hey, thanks so much for calling in today. Thank, thank you, David. Okay, take care. Uh, bye-bye. You've been listening to Midweek Politics with Dave Pakman. Midweek Politics is made possible in part by CSR Wire, the corporate social responsibility newswire at csrwire.com. By DIF Design, specializing in custom business websites at difdesign.com. To find out more about underwriting Midweek Politics, visit midweekpolitics.com.